Hello my friends and welcome to this new episode of Money Talk. The topic of today's video is going to be what are bubbles. We're going to see what bubbles are, how they form and by the end of this video you will become an expert at recognizing bubbles. Let's dive in. Before getting started, please hit the subscribe button down there to never miss a new video and activate the notification bell to increase your financial literacy every single week. Also, make sure to check out our website oakwealthbuilder.com. Let us start with the basics. What is a bubble? Well, it has a lot of names. Economic bubble, financial bubble, market bubble, price bubble, commodity bubble, speculative bubble, speculative mania or balloon. A bubble is a phenomenon where the price of a specific asset has gone up very, very high, way above its intrinsic value. It's also interesting to note that bubbles generally are based on inconsistent or implausible views regarding the future of that specific asset. History is full of examples of economic bubbles. Maybe you heard about the dot-com bubble that was in the 90s where technological stocks went into a bubble. The price went up very high and then it went bust. It crashed. Or you may have heard about the Roaring Twenties that was the bubble, the financial bubble of the US stock market in the 1920s. But in this video, we're going to focus on bubbles in general. We will talk in future episodes of Money Talk about specific bubbles that happened in the past in great detail. Be patient. Another characteristic about bubbles is that they all ultimately burst. And yes, all bubbles burst at some point or another in the future. They just inflate. They get bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger until one day they just burst. We also call this a crash. And when a crash occurs, all the people who initially made money thanks to the bubble, well, they lose everything. Economic bubbles can affect all kinds of asset classes. They can affect a commodity, an individual stock, maybe even real estate, maybe even an entire sector, maybe even an entire stock market, or even maybe the economy of an entire country. The very insidious thing about bubbles is that they're very hard to recognize when they are taking place, before they burst. It is only after they burst, after the crash, that economists, analysts, and the public in general recognizes the bubble. But at that point, it's already too late. But hopefully, there are some warning signs that will tell you that a bubble is taking place. And we will see everything about those signs in a few minutes. Economic bubbles have a very specific anatomy, and they can be dissected into five different parts. The first stage of a bubble is called the displacement stage. That's the moment where very well and usually professional investors start noticing a new trend, a new product, a new asset or a new stock. And they find it very interesting. They think it has a lot of potential, so they start investing money into that asset. And the price of that asset slowly takes off. And then comes the boom phase. More investors start noticing the new asset, and they also saw that the price slowly took off. As a result, they start pouring even more money into that new asset. And as a result, the price of that asset is going to take off pretty sharply. At that moment, we say that the asset gets momentum. Momentum is when people invest into a specific asset or stock just because its price has gone up in the past. So you got it, we enter into pure speculation, where investors hope to make short-term profit by buying low today and selling higher tomorrow. The third stage is the euphoria stage. That's the moment where the price of the asset has gone up so badly that the mainstream media starts being very interested about that new asset, because so many people are apparently getting rich so fast with that new asset. And that is also the moment where the general public finds out about the new assets and they have a very bad case of FOMO that is fear of missing out they fear to miss out on the party they fear to miss out the opportunity of getting rich quickly as a result they jump into the bubble they start buying the new asset fueling and pumping the bubble even more and at that point common sense and rationality are completely thrown out of the window the fourth stage of an economic bubble is called the profit-taking stage. That's the moment where very smart investors, or I should say the smartest investors, notice it is a bubble. 
and they also know how difficult it is to predict when a bubble is going to burst, when it is going to have an end. For these reasons, they take their profits. They just start selling the asset in question and take their profits away from the bubble. And at the end of the day, those very few investors are the only ones to make money during a bubble. But they're only a minority. The 97% of remaining investors do not think it is a bubble and they stay in the game. The fifth and final stage of a bubble is panic. Remember, the only thing that fuels a bubble is investor confidence. If that confidence goes away for a reason or another, the bubble bursts. And it takes a very minor incident or event to scorn investor confidence. For example, a disappointing earning report or the comment of a politician or the comment of a very famous investor. And at that point, everybody starts selling at any price. But the problem is, at that point, nobody wants to buy that asset anymore. And that is the crash. The price tumbles close to zero. And at that point, everybody loses their money. And the only thing they have left is their tears to cry. Now that you know what are the five stages of a bubble, it is time to know how they form. What are the mechanisms at play that make a bubble possible? Well, there are some folks out there who are going to tell you that bubbles are not real, that they can be mathematically explained with very complex models. But let's forget about them for a second, because there is a wide consensus that bubbles are real and there are psychological phenomena that are the cause of bubbles. And here we enter into the fascinating topic of behavioral economics. The first psychological phenomenon that may be behind bubbles is called the greater fool theory. That happens when we have overly optimistic investors who hope to buy at a certain price today to sell a little bit more expensive tomorrow to a greater fool. And the circus goes on and on and on until one day a certain fool will sell more expensive to the greatest fool, the guy who will buy right before the crash. This theory is charming, to say the least, but there is no real empirical proof yet to back it up. You will see there are more plausible theories out there. The second phenomenon is called extrapolation, and that happens when we project past data into the future. For example, imagine a certain stock went up by 10% yesterday. If I use extrapolation, I will expect it to grow by 10% today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, in three days, and so on and so forth. If I use that twisted logic, it makes sense to pay a very high price for that stock. But there is an old saying that says, trees do not grow to the sky. That reminds me of a short story. A few years ago, when I was really interested in real estate, I started visiting a few houses and a few buildings in my area. And I was suspecting that there was a slight bubble in the Swiss real estate. And other people agreed with me. And one day I visited a building and I asked the question to the real estate agent, what does he think about the potential bubble in real estate? And he told me, no, it is impossible. The prices of houses has been going up for 15 years in Switzerland and they are going to continue to grow for the next 15 years at the same pace. There you see, that is a typical example of extrapolation. Then comes another very interesting phenomenon called herding. That happens when people act like sheep in a herd. They follow the herd, whatever they do, without questioning. And in the case of the bubble, they buy the asset because everybody does without questioning. And when everybody sells, they sell the asset without questioning. But I already know what you're going to tell me. You're going to tell me that you're never the victim of herding, that you always follow your own path. But don't feel bad about it. Everybody can be the victim of herding, even very smart people. I want you to imagine this. Imagine that right now your neighbor is buying Bitcoin like crazy and he's making a hundred of thousands of dollars by buying Bitcoin. And one day he parks his brand new car just in front of your garage. I can tell you that when that happens, you're going to get hit very hard again by FOMO, fear of missing out. And you're going to say this, hey, if my neighbor can do it, I can do it. And you know what? I'm going to do it even better because in a few weeks I'm going to buy an even better car than him. So I'm going to buy Bitcoin right now. And there you go. You are now another victim of herding. But don't be mistaken. Herding does not happen only to amateur investors. 
It happens also very often to professional investors. Now you know the three major psychological phenomena behind bubbles. But now you may wonder, how do I do to recognize a bubble? Because as I said at the beginning of the video, it is extremely difficult to identify a bubble before it actually bursts. But hopefully there are some signs. And here you have the six warning signs that there is a bubble. The first warning sign there might be a bubble is low interest rates. When interest rates are low, you do not get a lot of money for the money you have deposited at the bank or you don't make a lot of money when you buy government bonds. As a result, investors are willing to take more risk to make money. And when they're willing to take more risk, they are more likely to indulge in the three psychological phenomena that we saw earlier. Number two, be very careful when some indicators and ratios are simply out of whack. For example, the price earning ratio for stocks, that is the price of the stock divided by the earnings per share of the stock. When that ratio is extremely high, abnormally high, it might be a warning sign of an upcoming bubble. The price earning ratio can be applied to an entire stock market. And this graph shows you the price earning ratio of the S&P 500. And you see that the ratio was extremely high right before great crashes, specifically in 2000, when the 90s dot-com bubble bursted. Number three, when there is a huge increase of leverage and on-margin trading. Leverage and on-margin trading is when a bank or your broker lends you money to buy a specific asset. And that may fuel a bubble even more. And you see that very often when speculators want to profit from a bubble very quickly by using leverage. So leverage and on-margin trading, warning sign. Number four, a heavy coverage from the mainstream media about a specific asset. Because when that happens, the general public finds out about that asset and they might fuel the bubble even more. Be especially careful when medias who normally do not talk about finance and investment suddenly start talking about it and show you all the great success stories about people who got rich super fast with a specific asset. The fifth warning sign of an upcoming bubble is when you see rationalizations of the very high price using very lame excuses. For example, people may tell you, but no, it is not a bubble because this time is different. Or no, you do not understand this new technology is a game changer. Or no, the price of houses always go up. When you hear that kind of statements, you can bet that there is a bubble. And specifically about new technologies. When people tell you, but you don't understand, this new technology is going to change our lives forever. It will make a lot of money. They will become the leader of the market. You will see they're losing money now, but in the future they will make a lot of money. <coughs> the sixth and final warning sign of an upcoming bubble is when people who are not into the investing game normally or who have no financial literacy suddenly start buying one single asset or they start becoming traders or day traders. Very often they heard about this in the media and put all of their money in one single asset. So be very careful when you suddenly see that the baker became a day trader or that when the bus driver became a trader because more often than not that is the sign of a bubble. That reminds me of a story. I don't know whether it is true or not but it is interesting nonetheless. One day in 1929, two months before the big crash, a very famous investor was heading to his office. And right before entering to the office, he saw that his shoes needed a little polish. So he went to the shoe shiner for a polish. And he starts having an interesting conversation with the shiner. And the shiner tells him, you know what? I started buying stocks. I became a trader just like you. And when the investor heard that, he immediately went to his office. And the first thing he says to everybody is, sell everything, sell everything that we have. And of course, everybody was very confused and surprised and they thought he had become completely crazy. And when the people asked him why he was selling all his stocks, he answered, too many people are buying stocks. And two months later, it was the crash. What is the conclusion to all of this? Well, be on the lookout for bubbles and avoid them. In the next episodes, we are going to talk about very interesting examples of bubbles in history. We're going to talk about the, one of the oldest bubbles of them all, Tulip Mania, and also about the 80s Japanese bubble and the dot-com bubble. 
That's it for this video about bubbles. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If that is the case, please give it a thumbs up. And if there is a topic you want me to cover in a future video, you can send an email to the address that is in the description below. And I will see you very soon for the next video. In the meantime, take care.